Hi everyone, I hope you're keeping safe and well. Today we're going to do our final session on Of Mice and Men. You've read chapters 5 and 6, so now we're going to consider the whole text and consider why Of Mice and Men is part of the trage tragedy genre. So, first thing we're going to do is just recap chapters 5 and 6 and the plot. And we'll be having a look at some key terminology and key definitions of a tragedy. And then finally, we'll be having a look at some activities that will help us decide who is the more tragic character in Of Mice and Men, George or Lenny. Um, you've got an A3 sheet to help you out. That's all you will need. Maybe your exercise book at certain points. Um, but everything that you need is on that A3 sheet that's attached. So first things first then quick recap of Of Mice and Men chapter 5. Remember, this is quite a pivotal chapter. Most of the men are outside in the barn, they're throwing horseshoes, so playing a game, taking bets, using their downtime to socialise and, and relax. Lenny is in the barn with his pup, but it becomes quite apparent very quickly that he's actually killed his puppy, so his puppy is now dead. Um, and he's killed that puppy by stroking it too hard. Uh, so he's broken its neck. Um, Curly's wife comes in um, looking for company. Remember, she's quite a lonely character. She's looking for attention. Um, she's already had her eye on Lenny as somebody who might be willing to engage with her. And she comes in and starts to flirt with him. And he confesses to her his liking for stroking nice things. Remember, he's a very tactile character. So he likes the uh, fur coat of the mice and the puppy. He likes the feel of the dress from the girl in weed. Um, now, she invites him to stroke her long, soft hair. Um, as his stroking becomes harder, so it becomes rougher, more aggressive, she starts to panic. The harder he strokes, the more she panics and he starts to panic as well because he thinks that if um, George hears her shouting, he's going to be in trouble. He won't have the rabbits anymore. So he tries to shut her up and she screams when she shows that she's in pain and panic um, and he accidentally breaks her neck in the process of that. He realises he's done a bad thing. He half buries her in the hay and he runs off. Um, and it's Candy that discovers her body. He informs the rest of the men. And from that point on, Curly is possessed by this need for revenge. He's not going to um, leave it to the police to find and arrest Lenny. He decides to hunt Lenny down and shoot him. And he forces George to join that manhunt. So chapter six then, we're back in the clearing, that Garden of Eden style clearing that we had in chapter one. Lenny's gone there because that is where George asked him to go if he ever got in trouble. Um, George has managed to get away from the other men and has found Lenny there. Um, so Lenny's panicking and George attempts to calm him down by telling him about their American dream, their ranch. But he also uses that as a distraction while he prepares um, the gun that he stole from Carlson and ultimately he shoots Lenny in the back of the head. And um, that is where we leave the text. Uh, we leave it with um, Slim leading, Lenny, uh, leading George away. To, to go and get drunk because he's so upset by what he's had to do. So now we know the overview, the plot, now we're reminded of that for chapters five and six, let's have a look at some of our key information. And for this slide, ladies and gents, you might want to pause at the end and just take some notes in your exercise book. So I will uh, give you some time to do that. So we're answering with this first slide then, what is a tragedy? So a tragedy is defined as a serious play or novel in which there is a disastrous downfall of the central character. And that disastrous downfall um, often is the death of the character. It's not always the case, 
but more often than not it is the death of the character. If you think back to um, other tragedies that we've studied this year, Romeo and Juliet, downfall of those central characters, Romeo and Juliet, they end up committing suicide. If you think back to Macbeth, which you studied in year eight, Macbeth is killed by Macduff, uh, and that is the, the downfall of, of our protagonist there. This tragic ending is caused by Hamartia. And you'll notice that word is in bold. We're going to have a little look in a few minutes as to what that word means. And you also have a glossary in the top right of your worksheet, which defines that word for you. We've got another two words that are in bold here. So again, they will be defined for you in a minute. And um, it talks about catharsis here. Catharsis is often achieved for the reader during the resolution. So we'll find out what that means in a minute. Um, the extent of the tragic effect, so the, the extent of the impact uh, on the reader depends on our awareness of the admirable qualities possessed by the character, those qualities that we admire, those good values and qualities that we recognise as, as being part of, of human behaviour and human society. And those admirable qualities are wasted by the disaster. And we have one final word in bold, climax, and we need to understand what that word means. So we'll discuss that in a second. The climax marks the point of no return at which the tragedy can no longer be prevented. So if you pause the video now and take some notes as to what you feel is important. Remember, don't copy the bullet points, take some key notes. OK, so we had four words in that definition of a tragedy that were in bold. Key words that you need to know and that will prove useful now and as you move towards GCSE. You can also see these on the top right hand side of your worksheet. They're in a little box. So the first word that we've got is climax, and that is the Greek word for ladder. You will find a lot of words regard to tragedy and the tragedy genre are Greek. So it's the def it's the word for ladder. Um, it's a moment of great intensity in a literary work and it's a decisive moment or decisive turning point in the text, the point of no return for our characters. Now it's said in the previous slide that the downfall of the characters is brought about by their hamartia. And hamartia is the Greek word for error or failure. And it's an action. That's important to remember. It's an action that leads to the character's downfall. And that action would be brought about by a misjudgment, ignorance, or, or something else, maybe an aspect of the personality. But when we talk about Hamartia, it is the action that leads to the character's downfall. It talked about the resolution on the previous slide as well. And resolution is part of the plot when the story reaches its conclusion and the main problem is resolved or worked out. And there's some catharsis for the reader. And catharsis is a moment of emotional release, which leads to purification. So, for example, we might feel um, an intense sense of sadness or pain. We are able to empathise with the character um, in a way or with the loss that we feel. So let's have a little look at this diagram. This is also on your sheet towards the bottom. And it puts into um, context uh, some of those words that we've just come across. You will notice that it's shaped like a pyramid. And you might previously at primary school have called this a story mountain. Um, it's actually called Freytag's Pyramid and it offers a structure for um, novels and plays. Um, and 
broadly speaking, they fall into this structure. So I want us to focus on the climax. And you'll notice that's right at the top of that peak. So the point of no return, that jumping off point, decisive turning point in the play. I want you to pause the video now and I want you to have a think. If we've got our definition of the climax as that decisive turning point, the point at which the downfall can no longer be changed or averted, what is the climax in Of Mice and Men? And you're going to have to think about chapter five, not chapter six. So if you pause the video now and answer that question for me, what is the climax in Of Mice and Men? What is the decisive turning point, the point of no return? And just jot yourself a little note on your copy of the diagram on your worksheet. Okay, so you've had a think about what that climax is and hopefully you've come to the, to the decision that the climax is the death of Curly's wife. So Curly's wife, wife's death is not a tragedy is the point of no return. It's the point at which novel changes. It's now the case that Lenny cannot survive in the way that he has been doing. He can no longer live as a companion to George. He has committed a murder. It's also the point at which George makes a decision that cannot be reversed, that he cannot back from and that leads us to the resolution at the end of the story George's decision to kill Lenny shoot him so the climax of the text and hopefully you've written this down on your sheet is the death murder of Curly's wife at the hands of Lenny so so now we're going to have a look at the top left of your worksheet asks you what is Lenny's Hamartia and what is George's Hamartia? Now if you remember Hamartia is the Greek word for error or failure and it's an action that leads directly to the character's downfall and that action is brought about by misjudgment, ignorance or some other cause. So first of all I want you to have a think about what Lenny's Hamartia is what is the action and what is that brought about by? And to help you do that, I'm just going to read you an extract from around that climax of, of, of Mice and Men in chapter five. So it says, Lenny's big fingers fell to stroking her hair. You muss it up, she said. Lenny said, oh, that's nice. And he stroked harder. Oh, that's nice. Look out now, you'll muss it. And then she cried angrily, you stop now, you'll mess it all up. She jerked her head sideways and Lenny's fingers closed on her hair and hung on. Let go, she cried, you let go. Lenny was in a panic. His face was contorted. She screamed then and Lenny's other hand closed over her mouth and nose. Please don't, he begged. Oh, please don't do that. George will be mad. She struggled violently under his hands. Her feet battered on the hay and she writhed to be free. And from under Lenny's hand came a muffled screaming. Lenny began to cry with fright. Oh, please don't do none of that, he begged. George going to say I've done a bad thing. He ain't going to let me tend no rabbits moved his hand a little and her hoarse cry came out. Then Lenny grew angry. Now don't, he said. I don't want you to, uh, to yell. You're going to get me in trouble just like George says you will. Now you don't do that. And she continued to struggle and her eyes were wild with terror. He shook her then as he was angry with her. Don't you go yelling, he said. 
and he shook her and her body flopped like a fish and then she was still for lenny had broken her neck he looked down at her and carefully he removed his hand from over her mouth and she lay still i don't want to hurt you he said but george will be mad if you yell when she didn't answer nor move he bent closely over her hat over her he lifted her arm and let it drop for a moment he seemed bewildered and then he whispered in fright i done a bad thing i done another bad thing he poured up the hay until it partly covered her from outside the barn came a cry of men and the double clang of shoes on metal for the first time lenny became conscious of the outside he crouched down in the hay and listened i done a real bad thing he said i shouldn't have did that george will be mad and he said and hide in the brush till he come he's gonna be mad in the brush till he come that's what he said lenny went back and looked at the dead girl the puppy lay close to her lenny picked it up throw him away he said it's bad enough like it is he put the pup under his coat and he crept to the barn wall and peered out between the cracks towards the horseshoe game and then he crept round the end of the last manger and disappeared the sun streaks were high on the wall by now and the light was growing soft in the barn curly's wife lay on her back and she was covered with hay so what i want to know is what is lenny's hamartia what is the action that leads to the character's downfall and then think about what has that been brought on by is it a misjudgment of something is he ignorant or unaware of something or is there some other cause so if you pause the video now and have a think what is lenny's hamartia okay so we should have had a think about that and based on what i've read out to you we should have the idea that his action is his violence his power that's what leads to his downfall isn't it it's the murder of curly's wife that leads to his downfall it's his violence what is that brought on by is Lenny aware of his power and his use of violence or is he ignorant of it has he misjudged the situation you make that decision now okay so now we need to consider what is George's hamartia and to help with that I'm going to read something from chapter one so going all the way back to the start of the text if you remember in chapter one george and lenny are in the clearing um going to go up to the ranch tomorrow to begin work and uh, george is telling lenny what to do if he gets in trouble so well look lenny if you just happen to get in trouble like you always done before i want you to come right here and hide in the brush hide in the brush said lenny slowly hide in the brush till i come for you can you remember that sure i can george hide in the brush till you come you ain't gonna get in no trouble because if you do i won't let you tend the rabbits he threw his empty cane can off into the brush i won't get in no trouble george i ain't gonna say a word okay so what is george actually doing there telling Lenny if he gets in trouble he's got to run and hide and we know that that's already been the case and what they've done when Lenny was in trouble weed they ran they hid and eventually they got out of weed so what is George's action what is the thing that leads to his downfall and what is that brought about by? Pause the video now and have a think about it.
Okay, so this one is a little bit trickier perhaps than Lenny's Hamart here because George doesn't do anything decisive in the same way that Lenny does. But you might want to question if you had done something terrible, something unacceptable, what do your parents, what do your teachers teach you to do? They teach you to accept responsibility. Whereas George is teaching Lenny to run away. So is George teaching Lenny to correct his bad behaviour? Or is his action, in fact, a lack of action? Is George's hamartia, his downfall, a lack of action where it comes towards Lenny? And what's that brought about by? Why do you think George tells Lenny to run away? Why does he not act to correct Lenny's behaviour instead of making Lenny face up to his responsibilities? Well, it could be misjudgment. Maybe he misjudges uh, danger that Lenny poses and Lenny's power. It could be ignorance. He might not have uh, been aware of the extent of Lenny's power. It could be something else, and I think there is something else playing here. Why does George protect Lenny and therefore have a lack of action which leads to his downfall? Possibly because he loves him. Okay, so We've got Lenny's Hamartia as his power and violence, and that's brought about by um, his ignorance of his own power um, and his own physicality. We've got the idea that George's Hamartia is a lack of action when it comes to Lenny and dealing with Lenny, and that's brought about perhaps by a misjudgment of the danger Lenny poses and possibly love or a desire to protect him. So now we've got that sorted, let's have a little look at some questions to consider. And you will notice that on your worksheets, these are split into two spider diagrams, if you like. And the questions are specifically numbered. So you're going to consider one question from Lenny first, and then you're going to move to consider a question with regard to George. So, Let's just have a quick read through the questions. I want to clarify a couple of things for you and then you need to pause the video so that you can fill your ideas out on the sheet. And you will notice that on the sheet it asks you to add quotations from across the text for these particular ideas. So first of all, you are asked, how does Lenny's strength and violence, remember that's his hamartia, we've just discussed that, how does that lead to tragedy? And you've got to provide some quotes for that. I want you to think about how Steinbeck signposts that this is going to pose a problem, because we aren't surprised by Lenny's um, act of murder. We're not surprised by that. It's a shocking act, it's a brutal act, it's not a surprising one where Lenny's concerned. So how does um, Steinbeck signpost that and how does it lead to tragedy? That's your first question you're going to look at. You're then going to consider how does George's inaction lead to tragedy? So the lack of action where Lenny's concerned, how does that lead to tragedy? You're going to do those questions first and you're going to add in quotations from across the text to help you. Question three asks you to think about animal imagery when it comes to Lenny. We've talked about this before. So the question is, how does Steinbeck use animal imagery to suggest Lenny only has basic instincts? I would like you to find some quotes from across the text and really think about what Steinbeck is doing there. Then I want you to move on to question four. And for question four, we need to think very carefully about what it's asking us. It says, 
So we see George's decision as premeditated murder. And we've got a couple of words that we really need to think about carefully. First of all, murder, the brutal act of taking somebody's life, and then premeditated, the idea of planning that murder in advance. So do we see George's actions as premeditated murder? Do we see it as that cruel, callous taking of life that we know to be murder? Do we see it as something different? Have a think about that question there. And to help you with that question, we're just going to have a quick read of the resolution of the, uh, of the text. So, George and Lenny are down by the clearing and George is calming Lenny down. And it says, look across the river like you can almost see the place. Lenny obeyed him. George looked down at the gun. There were crashing footsteps in the brush now. George turned and looked towards them. Come on, George, when are we going to do it? We're going to do it soon. Me and you. You and me. Everybody going to be nice to you. Ain't going to be no more trouble. Nobody going to hurt nobody nor steal from him. Lenny said, I thought you was mad at me, George. No, said George. No, Lenny, I ain't mad. I've never been mad and I ain't now. That's the thing I want you to know. The voices came close now. George raised the gun and listened to the voices. Lenny begged, let's do it now. Let's get that place now. Sure, right now. I gotta, we gotta. And George raised the gun and steadied it, and he brought the muzzle of it close to the back of Lenny's head. The hand shook violently, but his face set and his hand steadied. He pulled the trigger. The crash of the shot rolled up the hills and rolled down again. Lenny jarred and then settled slowly forward to the sand, and he lay without quivering. George shivered and looked at the gun, then he threw it from him, up the bank near the pile of old ashes. The brush seemed filled with cries and the sound of running feet. Slim's voice shouted, George, where you at, George? But George sat stiffly on the bank and looked at his right hand and uh, had thrown the gun away. The group burst into the clearing and Coley was ahead. He saw Lenny lying on the sand him by God. He went over and looked down at Lenny and then he looked back at George. Right in the back of the head, he said softly. Slim came directly to George and sat down beside him, sat very close to him. Never you mind, said Slim. A guy got to sometimes. But Carlson was standing over George. How'd you do it? he asked. I'd just done it, George said tiredly. He have my gun? Yeah, he had your gun. And you got it away from him and you took it and you killed him? Yeah, that's how. George's voice was almost a whisper. He looked steadily at his right hand that had held the gun. Slim twitched George's elbow. Come on, George, me and you will go get a drink. George let himself be helped to his feet. Yeah, a drink. Slim said, you had her, George. I swear you had her. Come on with me. He led George to, into the entrance of the trail and up towards the highway. Early and Carlson looked after them. And Carlson said, what you hell suppose is eating them two guys? So, that's the resolution of the text. George has shot Lenny dead. Should we be considering that an act of premeditated murder? Is, is that the decision to need to kill someone? Or is that decision based on something else entirely? Also, consider, does Lenny achieve his American dream? Does he get his happily ever after in a way? 
consider why or why not. And then finally, George, how is the American dream used as a device to develop a sense of catharsis to the reader? Remember what the American dream is in this text. It's the idea that they are going to get their ranch where they don't have to work for anybody else for a small amount of money. They get to work for themselves. They are independent. They don't have anybody being cruel to them. They don't have anybody taking money that they deserve. It's all theirs. So have a think about how that's been used throughout the text. And consider why George's choice and what the American dream means to him. Why does that make the end of the text so sad? So pause the video now. Consider those six questions and jot your ideas down on your worksheet. If you're unsure of any questions, just leave it for a few minutes and move on to the next one. OK, finally, I want you to answer this question that's right at the bottom of your page in the centre in a box. Who is the greater tragic character and why? So who do you think has the greater tragedy? Is it Lenny or is it George? Which character do you feel um, more sadness for? Lenny or George? Tell me why. Pause the video now and get that written. OK, so hopefully you have written your ideas out. As per usual, take a snapshot of this for me and load it to the usual um, platform. And then I will tell you what I think uh, or who I think is the greater tragic character and why I'll tell you my opinion. OK, so once you've done that, we are all done for Of Mice and Men. I hope you enjoyed the text. I hope you found it a really rewarding text to read. It's one of my favourites and it's, it's one that has the most impact on me. OK, I look forward to seeing your work and, and your opinions. All right, thanks for listening and thanks for watching. And I look forward to seeing your work.